Welcome back. We're in session two, and in this session, we are going to talk about things we actually have to give up in order to create space to be closer to God. So in the first session, we talked about not giving up, that we want to ask God for that endurance and perseverance to stay close to him, to see what it is he's up to, to allow God to renew us, to stay in that process. But in order for God to renew us, there are things that we actually have to let go of and give up, which is partly one of the practices, one of the spiritual disciplines of Lent is to choose something to give up. Now, I will say, I, growing up, I grew up in Chicago. There's a lot of Catholics in Chicago. I've had a lot of Catholic friends. So Lent was a big practice for them. So I would kind of jump on that bandwagon and give something up. Well, as our 15-year-old high school selves, we usually gave up chocolate, thinking that we would somehow go on this diet, that we were gonna lose weight if we gave up chocolate. So there was no spiritual higher purpose in what we gave up, and it usually lasted for maybe a week if we were doing well. So we're not talking about giving up something frivolous or silly like that. We're talking about giving up something for the purpose of creating space in our lives that we can welcome in more of the Holy Spirit and more of Jesus, that we can fix our eyes more on Jesus, get something out of the way in order to create that space to do that. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that in this session. And there's this lovely set of verses in Hebrews 12 that lends itself perfectly actually to session one as well as session two. So I'm gonna start there, Hebrews 12 verses one through three. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So you see how this passage actually could have fit great in session one, too. It talks about how Jesus endured because he knew that there was more beyond the cross um, and that we shouldn't lose heart because we have this example of Jesus not giving up. Um, but I actually want to focus on the first portion of this passage where it says that we need to throw off things that are hindering us. So he, the, the writer of Hebrews gives this image of somebody persevering and running a race. And when you run a race, you don't want to be carrying, on, carrying with you a bunch of baggage because it's going to slow you down. So imagine in life, you're carrying a backpack with you and there are probably some things in that backpack that are unnecessary and that are weighing you down, slowing you down, distracting you, maybe are unhealthy, are for whatever reason, slowing you down in your pursuit of following Jesus. So those are the things that we want to get rid of. Get rid of. I also think that the author of Hebrews here gives us this goal of fixing our eyes on Jesus. So I also think in the context of vision, what are things that are blocking my view of Jesus? If I'm supposed to fix my eyes on Jesus, are there other things my eyes are fixated on that are taking my eyes off of where they should be? And those are the things that I need to give up or practice giving up during this Lent season so that I can get my eyes sighted back where they need to be. So either think of it as something you need to throw off because it's hindering you or something that's blocking your vision of Jesus. And I said in session one, I wanted to talk a little bit about rest and just the importance of that that even though we're enduring and pushing through and trying to persevere, it doesn't mean we don't ever slow down. In fact, rest is part of what renews us. Even Olympic athletes treat rest at, as a very high priority. They wouldn't be able to train the way that they do if they didn't also have rest. So that's true in our spiritual life as well. I mean, in fact, God has essentially commanded that we rest and that we rest in him and rest in the spirit's power. So um, I feel like that's actually one of the lessons we've learned in 2020 is the importance of not being so busy and not being living such a hectic pace of life 
So because we've pared down our schedules, whether we wanted to or not, we've pared down our schedules, we are living a more sane pace of life. So I feel like in one sense, my body is more at rest, like our schedule is more at rest. However, this is the thing that I'm noticing for me, and this is what I'm going to try to work on this Lent. Um, my soul and my mind, that doesn't always translate to my soul and my mind being at rest. Um, just because I have more free time doesn't mean that I'm using it to focus on Jesus always. Some days better than others. Um, so what I've noticed, let me ask you this question, see if you've noticed this too, that does your soul feel at rest after you have scroll, scrolled through social media? Does your soul feel at rest after you've watched too much news? Does your soul feel at rest after you've watched nine episodes of that show you've been watching? Or even, I've even noticed like, I never used to play games on my phone, but now it's like, oh, I have this time. I'm just sitting here, I'll play a game, which is fine. Nothing wrong with those things. But that can't, those things can't be my only form of rest or leisure because they don't rest my soul, my spirit, my mind. But let's contrast that with, does your soul feel at rest after you've read a good book? Does your soul feel at rest after you've gone for a walk? Does your soul feel at rest after you've had a conversation with a good friend? Does your soul feel at rest after you've done something creative? Does your soul feel at rest after you've spent time conversing with God in prayer? Those things are rejuvenating and renewing. And my daughter and I were saying the other day, like, why in the world did we not read more books in 2020? Like you would think our list would be so long. And I know that some of y'all have done a really good job with that, but you would think our list would be so long. We had all this downtime that we don't normally have. Why were we not reading? And it's because we get sucked into these surface things that we think are relaxing and they really aren't. So that's something that I'm wanting to give up, like give up more of the technology to create space for leisure things that are actually life giving and soul building and um, encouraging of my relationship with God. Um, so that's one example of we have to give up something to create space for something better to take its place, something that's going to help us grow in our relationship with Jesus. So um, just I would just encourage you to think through Take some time to think through what it is that is either distracting you from your relationship with God or your relationship with other people. What do you think is restful, but it really just, it doesn't really feed you in any meaningful way. Think about getting rid of those things and picking a practice that actually grows you and feeds you for this Lent season. So we're going to throw off the things that hinder us and we're going to fix our eyes on Jesus. So in your reflection time, you'll have some time to unpack that and think through, well, what could those practices be that actually feed me instead of distract me or weigh me down? Okay, I want to move to another passage of scripture that I wouldn't have normally connected with this theme, but it fascinated me when I came across it because it speaks about enduring and persevering. Um, but then it has this little twist to it that I hadn't noticed before. So this is Revelation 2. And in Revelation 2 and 3, the spirit of Jesus is talking to these seven churches and telling them both, um, encouraging them for what they've done well, but also kind of bringing some conviction about things that they have not done as well or ways that they're falling short of God's best for them. So in Revelation 2... 1 through 5, Jesus is speaking to the church of Ephesus, and he actually commends them for enduring well. So on the one hand, you would think, oh, this is great. Let me read this part. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds and your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people and that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and you found them false. 
you have persevered and you have endured hardships for my name and you have not grown weary. So let me stop there. We talked about session one, right? Like we want to endure, we want to persevere. We don't want to grow weary in our pursuit of God. So this church in Ephesus has done a great job with this. So you would think like, okay, awesome. They've, they've persevered, they've run the race. But then Jesus says to them, I hold this against you though. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. They have forsaken their first love. They took their eyes off of Jesus. So this says to me that even though they were commended for persevering and enduring, that it's possible to persevere and endure and do it of our own strength, to rely on our own power and effort, to just grit our teeth and get through it, to grin and bear it. Like, yeah, I'm enduring, but I've lost focus on my purpose. I've lost f focus on the one who loved me first and I need to be loving him back. Like the love of God has been removed from my, I'm just going to push through this and do the best I can. It seems like that maybe is, was happening in the church of Ephesus. They endured well, but they forsook their first love. So again, this Lent season is a great opportunity for us to be reminded of our first love to fix our eyes back on him, especially as we're meditating on all that Christ did for us um, in going to the cross and what led up to that, all that he sacrificed for us to be reminded of why we love him and to really be pursuing that and having our eyes focused on that. Um, our sermon series for Lake Highlands UMC this Lent is actually called Christ Centered. And each week we're gonna be talking about the different things that Christ has done for us. And through that, we're also going to be doing a reading plan that focuses on each of those themes um, for the few weeks of Lent. And in addition to that, we're gonna create a Facebook discussion group for those readings. So you can hop on every day, read the passage that has to do either with Jesus or with following Jesus. Um, and then we can answer some questions together and just have that dialogue with one another as we help to encourage one another to stay Christ-centered. And not only Christ-centered, but to have Jesus as our first love again. Like that ultimately, we don't want to just endure for the sake of enduring. We want to endure because we love Jesus, that he's our first love. He first loved us, and we want to love him in return. So... Like I talked about at the beginning, we don't just give something up for Lent just because, oh, that's a nice thing to do. We give something up because we're showing our deep love for who Jesus is. So um, I'll have written in, our, in your notes um, how to join that Facebook group if you'd like to join in that reading plan to be part of that discussion group to help us stay Christ-centered. Um, and uh, as you go into your time of reflection, obviously you can be praying through what it is that might be helpful to let go of this season in order to create more space for God or to create a discipline that will keep you connected to the Holy Spirit. Um, I actually want to close with some song lyrics that I came across the other day that I feel like fit this theme of feeling weary but needing to push through and also fit the theme of pursuing our first love of God and just desiring to be with God. So the few words I'm going to pull out here are quite simple. The uh, author of the song is talking about being weird, like the image is that the person is swimming and swimming and swimming and growing tired. Like they're trying to reach this other side and they're not reaching it and they just keep swimming. So it says, my arms are tired or, and weary. I don't know if I can swim anymore. I see the light, but I never find the surface. One day will wash up on mercy's shore. One day we'll wash up on mercy's shore. For all of our striving and persevering, ultimately what we're craving and longing for is Jesus, to one day wash up on mercy's shore. I love that image of one day washing up on mercy's shore, that once we're there and we're finally in the presence of Jesus, we'll no longer be weary, we'll no longer be dealing with hardship 
all of that will be wiped away. We can finally breathe easy when we're on mercy shore in Jesus' presence. But in this lifetime, it feels like we're swimming and we're swimming, we're persevering. I think of Dory, like, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Like, I'm just swimming and swimming and I'm tired. And like, yes, there are these moments of joy along the way, but it just, as Eugene Peterson says, it feels like life is a long obedience in the same direction. Like, we're just, we're on this long path, this long journey. We're trying to obey, we're striving for God, um, and we press on, but one day we will receive the prize of being with Jesus face to face. One day we're going to land on mercy's shore and all the, the weight of sin and hardship and darkness is just going to fall off because we'll be finally in the light of his presence. So that song spoke to me that even though we're feeling tired and weary right now, Someday we're going to wash up on Mercy's shore and all of this will have been worth it. It will have been worth it to pursue God with everything that we have. We'll receive that prize. So in the meantime, <laughs> let's continue to fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's not give up on God's work in us, but let's give up the worldly things that are distracting us from pursuing him with everything that we have. And all the while, let's remember too, this is super important, that the Spirit is with us to equip us and empower us and enable us to live a life that is rooted in God. We don't do it of our own power because that's a recipe for burnout if we try to do that of our own power. We're going to give up if that's if we're trying to find strength within ourselves to persevere. Um, the Spirit is there to enable us, to draw us into relationship, to build in us the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, so I will leave you here with some time to think about what it is that you might need to give up to create space for. How can you reclaim your first love of God? Um, put him in that place again. Let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you that you loved us first. And Lord, we want to return that love to you. We want to get rid of anything that is in the way of us fixing our eyes on you. So I just ask that you would give us wisdom this season as to what it is we need to let go of, what we need to give up in order to create space in our lives for you. We pray this in your name. Amen.